How come Jensen can cook 8 GPUs and I can only cook 4 GPUs? Last time, I walked you through my AA server build. The reasoning, the parts, the benchmarks, and lessons learned. If you missed that, there's a link in the description. This video isn't about which GPU to buy. If you want up-to-date recommendations for GPUs to buy in AI in 2025, check the link in the description for a podcast episode where we go deeper on that. Today is about making gaming GPUs reliable for AI and ML workloads at home. We'll look at four things that you have to balance. Cost, space, heat, and power. And I'll share what worked, what didn't, and how to avoid the issues that I encountered. You'll see this chart throughout the video as a rough guide. It shows four factors you have to balance in a multi-GPU build. Cost, space, heat, and power. As we go through each one, I'll highlight it and update the chart to show how the choice shifts the balance of the build. If you've seen my previous video, you know I'm working on a lower budget by going for used parts. I picked up three RTX 3090s over the past few months from auction sites and local marketplaces. They average about $800 each. By coincidence, a huge Thermaltake XT20 case popped up in a local auction. I didn't even know it existed until I saw the listing. After a quick research, I realized it was exactly what I needed, and I grabbed it for $100. The PSU is a rare 2000 watts EVGA unit, still under warranty and barely used. I first bought it for an external GPU on my son's PC. It was only $200, and I thought it could be handy in the future. Turns out, that was good foresight. I even got some used Noctua industrial fans included in an old PC that I bought for another build. I'll show that one in a future video. It started as a budget home server, but well, it got out of hand. By saving on costs, the trade-off was pushing more pressure into the other factors such as space, heat, and power. Space was the factor I decided to overallocate. I already had the Thermaltake XT20, massive compared to most cases. More physical space will help me with the heat factor later on. To actually use that space, I needed to extend the GPU connections physically further from the motherboard. This is where things got really messy. My original plan was to max out the motherboard's unique bifurcation feature of slot 2, splitting one 16 slot into two usable lanes. I bought a bifurcating riser by 16 to by 8 plus by 8 which did not work in a by 8 slot that should split in a by 4 plus by 4. Obvious in hindsight, luckily I was able to return it. Next, I tried the by 16 extension cables. I measured and picked the length and even chose which side of the connector should exit. Then it arrived, the cable was a bit short and the connector exited on the wrong side. This meant ugly bends and tight routing all the way to an early morning rebuild session. My wife ended up holding the screws to the GPUs while I tried not to kink the cables and block the fans. Then after the tensor parallelism test, I realized that I needed a fourth GPU. With bifurcation off the table, I tried M.2 PCI adapters which are cheaper. But the ones I got were by one, not by fours. So unless it explicitly says by four, assume it's not. The ProArts M.2 heat shield wouldn't close, so I moved the NVMe to another slot. Thermally, this works well. I can space the GPUs better at the bottom deck. More space means the heat factor gets a little relief since the GPUs aren't cramped up against each other anymore. I was already thinking about heat before getting the third GPU. That one turned up about 500 kilometers away. So I asked my friend Alex to pick it up for me. While planning where it would fit, I sketched a rough airflow diagram. While we were chatting, Alex mentioned his 3D printers. That gave me an idea. I could get a simple shroud printed and shipped with a GPU. I found one on Thingiverse and sent him the link. A few hours later, he messaged me it had printed. But he said, surprise, instead of a basic one, he made a better design. In his words, it aims to attain a consistent cross-sectional area by blending the circular and rectangular along the midpoint of the fan. With these 3D printed shrouds in hand, I refined the airflow on my sketch. The case already had two 200mm Noctua fans. I added a few more to get a slightly positive air pressure. One intake through the shroud feeding the pair of GPUs at the bottom deck and the exhaust pulling that air out of the bottom. On the top deck, air flows front to back. The two CPU fans push it towards the rear. 
the rear exhaust pulls the heat out and more exits through the top rear exhaust. Under heavy load at 20 degrees ambient, my GPU temps top out around 60 degrees. I use fan control by Remy to fine tune the curves and triggers, so the fans only spin up as needed but the temps stay locked in. Spending a little bit more with 3D printed shrouds and high quality fans gives me room to bring the heat factor down. For power, I'm running a used 2000 watt power supply, more than enough headroom for 4 GPUs. The only real challenge here is the 2 GPUs at the bottom deck. With standard PCIe power cables, there's no way to fit them without a hard bend that risks damaging the cables or the connectors. The fix is a U-shaped adapter. They flip the cable 180 degrees so it comes from underneath and straight in the GPU's power connector. As for power usage, I'm not too worried. The 3090s are power hungry and not exactly efficient, but this one factor I'm happy to spend in. I got excess solar for about 8 months of the year, so electricity cost isn't really a concern. In factor terms, I've pushed the power slice higher to keep the GP cost lower, a trade that works for my setup. I'd like to thank you, those who watched our first video. Initially, we were thinking we will be just getting around 100 views. But to our surprise, we're now over 10,000 views. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hopefully, this video was useful for you not cooking your GPUs by me sharing how I balance the four factors of cost, space, heat, and power, it will be hopefully useful for your build. If you have any questions, please put them on the comments below or share how you've solved your factors. Last week, I was feeling a bit under the weather and I couldn't do any voiceovers. So I started messing with a few text-to-speech models and one thing led to the other and we started cooking with these GPUs. And by the end of the weekend, we now have a podcast. Check it out, and we've gone deep on some very useful topics. And if you want to read the full backstory, it's on episode one. June, are you done yet? Just doing the finishing touches. I'm almost there.